Hi everyone. This uh, video is on how to calculate the lattice energy using the born harbor cycle, which we discuss uh, in class, but I just want to give you another um, repeat lecture on it so that you are clear because we were kind of closing in at the end of lecture when we talked about this topic. Okay, so lattice energy, remember that's just another name for the strength of the ionic bonds that we have between a metal and nonmetal ion turns out that you can't measure this experimentally. So in this case, what we're going to do, as we did for other reactions, which we can't measure energy directly, is to construct something we refer to as a thermodynamic cycle, which is basically, remember, it's just a series of reactions that would lead to the reaction that we're interested in. The specific set of reactions that lead to calculating lattice energy is what's referred to as the born harbor cycle. So what exactly are the reactions that compose the born harbor cycle? These are the following reactions. They're not really the reactions, but these are the energies of those reactions, which when you add together will result in your lattice energy. Okay? So the energies that you're going to need are ionization energy, usually for the cation formation, electron affinity energy, this is for the anion formation, bond dissociation energy, which is usually needed to make the one of the atoms go from a diatomic to a monoatomic ion, uh, element, sublimation energy is needed to convert a solid to a gas, and lastly, lattice energy is also part of this, and when you take these five reactions listed here, and you add them all together, what you get is the reaction that corresponds to the formation reaction for that specific ionic solid. And of course, if we have a formation reaction, the enthalpy that is calculated or measured as a result of that reaction is what we call the enthalpy of formation, which has this symbol right here, delta H not F. So I'm just going to show you how this is done in practice. Let's say we have the following question. What is lattice energy for sodium chloride solid? Okay. Now, first off, what you have to know is what exactly does this reaction represent, the one that is, uh, whose energy is called the lattice energy. The reaction is always the following type. The cation in the gas state plus the anion in the gas state, or in the gas, not in the aqueous state, forming the ionic solid itself. Okay. So the energy that accompanies this particular process is what's referred to as the lattice energy. You can call it delta H lattice to be short. Okay, so that's what we're trying to figure out is this quantity right here. So the question is how do we arrange the reactions that I wrote in the previous slide to come up with the value for delta H lattice. What I'm going to do on the next slide is write all the reactions that we have for each of the values listed here, ionization energy and so on, and show you how when you add all of these together what you get is the enthalpy of formation for sodium chloride solid. So here are the five reactions that I mentioned a couple of slides ago. Let me just show you again what those reactions are, one, two, three, four, five. And I said that when you add all these reactions together, what you will get is the formation reaction for sodium chloride, for the ionic solid. Okay, so in order to get your enthalpy uh, for la the lattice energy, right, you need to uh, kind of think about the following processes. The first one is you're going to have your sodium, which in this case starts from a solid state, but you're going to need to bring this to the gr uh, gas state. And the reason is because a lot of the other energies are measured in, get in the gas state, so as a result, you can't just uh, use sodium solid for your energy um, value, but you have to convert it to the gas state first, okay? So as a result, the first step in this case is the sublimation step, okay? So this is what the enthalpy of sublimation is for sodium going from solid to gas, and your value here is positive 108. And again, this would be a positive or endothermic step because you're trying to break a solid which are uh, connected very well together to a gas which are which don't have any interactions with other uh, atoms, right? Sodium, all the sodium atoms would be then separated from each other. So you're going to need to put an energy to do this. The second step here is to take that gas state sodium and convert it to the sodium ion in the gas state. And of course, 
This particular process, the energy that accompanies this, is what we refer to as the ionization energy, and that's also a positive because you're taking an electron away from an atom, uh, and that's costly in terms of energy. So in this case, the value is positive 496 kilojoule. And then the next thing is now to look at the anion formation. The first thing to do, again, is to convert your chlorine from its natural state, which is Cl2 in the gas state, to monoatomic chlorine in this case. So you're going to take Cl2 and convert it to 2Cl. This is what we refer to as the bond dissociation energy or the bond breaking energy, covalent bond breaking. And breaking a bond costs you energy, in this case positive 244 kilojoules. And then lastly, you need to take that chlorine in the atomic state, in the atom state, to an ion. So in order to do that, you need to add an electron to, my, to your chlorine, which is right here. And that electron added chlorine gives you a chloride ion, and the energy here is, of course, what we refer to as the electron affinity energy, and that's an exothermic process, so it gives you negative 349. If you were to add all of these together, last step in your series of steps is the lattice energy reaction itself, which is always written as the sodium plus and Cl minus going to the ionic solid, as I mentioned in the previous slide. If I were to add all these reactions together, and I cancel all the species that are the same and react on some product, you can see the following would happen. Sodium gas would cancel the electron would cancel. Now, uh, the next thing that you want to notice is the sodium plus in the gas state here would cancel with the one right here, the green one. Your Cl minus would cancel. And then so, the only other thing that you would cancel is really the Cl in the gas phase right here. However, they have different numbers, so what you would do at this point is in the born haber cycle, usually what would happen is we would multiply the bond dissociation energy with the appropriate number to get them to cancel. So in this case, if we multiply this by half, this would become 1, and the bond dissociation energy would go from positive 244 to positive 122 kilojoule. And as a result now, that allows you to cancel the chlorine right here, so you see where I'm writing this, the chlorine is cancelled out, and then so you're left with the following species, sodium solid, um, half uh, chlorine gas, and on the product side you have an ACL solid, so if you were to write that out, sodium solid, half a chlorine gas, going to an ACL solid, if you look at this reaction carefully from your understanding in chapter 6, this reaction would give you the enthalpy of formation for sodium chloride, which you can look up back of the book, and this value would be negative 411 kilojoules. Okay? Now, this is now becomes relatively straightforward since all of the five reactions add up to my formation reaction in order to figure out what the value of the lattice energy would be I just need to take the formation enthalpy and then subtract it from all these four numbers, which I'll do in the next slide. So the way it would look like in the form of an equation would be written right here, where you have delta H lattice equals to formation enthalpy minus all the other four numbers added together. And I want to point out here that the value we're going to use for the bond energy would be half of what the value is, because remember we have to multiply it by half in order to cancel the uh, chlorine gas, right? So then once you do this, then you just substitute in the numbers. So if you put in the numbers, this is what you will see, negative 411 kilojoules minus all of this energy. The only thing you have to remember here again is that the electron affinity is a negative symbol, so you just put negative 349 there. And if you were to calculate this, the number you would get in the end would be and the answer would be negative 788 kilojoules. And as you can see, this is a fairly large number, right? And not only large, but it's also exothermic. So that's really what uh, is important here, is to remind you that of an ionic bond is really very, very strong. So in other words, to break a sodium chloride bond, you're going to need to input 788 kilojoules of energy to do this. When we discuss covalent bonds later on, you will see that a covalent bond tend to have a much weaker 
um, bond strength in the order of maybe about 400 kilojoules or so. And so you can see this is why an ionic bond is very strong. Part of the reason being that the lattice interaction, which is the actual interaction between the sodium ion and the chloride ion, okay, this is your positive and this is your negative right here, that interaction is very, very strong, and that is what's being measured by the lattice energy, okay?